check this out, would you? The side of our house looks like a bomb's gone off. The rest of the yard, that's all been done and it's all looking pretty good. We just need to wait for some of those plants to grow. But the sideway, it definitely needs some work. Now the first job I want to have a crack at is to build an outdoor shower because let's face it, Lock Beach House doesn't have one. I already have the hot and cold water installed and there's a tap down there to wash your feet. So all we need to do is to build a timber screen to attach our tapware to, install some plumbing to handle all that water waste and then lay a concrete slab to give us something to stand on. And my objective is to do this as cheaply as I possibly can by using recycled materials apart from the concrete slab. And with a bit of luck, I should be able to scrounge most of that material up from around the house. Anyway, g'day folks. My name's Uncle Knackers and you're watching DIY for Knuckleheads. Let's do it. Alright, all I've done here is I've marked out where the concrete slab's going to go and now all we have to do is to dig this out, just scrap the top off it, get a nice firm surface. Now that's a good solid surface for us to be working off and the next job we need to do is to form up for our little slab. And for the boxing, all I'm using are these old recycled floorboards that I had lying around the house. It is a bit of a shame though because I had a really nice project lined up for these little babies. Oh well, the sacrifices I make. They might be able to be washed down. We'll wait and see. Anyway, form up for the slab, install the plumbing, and then we're good to go to lay the slab. Too easy. It's just started to drizzle outside, so I had to abandon that slab, and I thought it might be a great idea to come inside, make myself a cup of tea. Oh, it does not get much better than that. That's a good cuppa. Come inside and have a look at the last of my stash to see what I have to build that timber screen. I've got here some 70 by 35, or 3 by one and a half, it's all hardwood, and I think I'll use this to go around the outside of the timber screen. For the framework behind the timber screen, I've got a couple of sticks here of treated pine, that should work well, and for the face of the timber screen, I'm just going to use these old hardwood fence palings, which once sanded, should come up an absolute treat. All right. I'm going to finish this beautiful cup of tea, get the saw set up, and then bang this frame together. Let's do it. I tell you what, I have to give credit where credit's due. I've had my old DeWalt saw here for around 10 years, and in that time all it's done is chop up gnarly old wood, and it's still going like an absolute champion. Love it. And guess who forgot to denail the timber and ripped up the pad on his brand new sander? That's good. The frame's now been cut to size, sanded, and now it's time to glue, nail, and screw it together. Beautiful. Whenever you drill a hole and you want to get a nice finish, it's always good to countersink it. And I'm using this countersinking tool here. It's a fantastic bit of kit. Just watch what it does. The yellow part spins. 
and when it stops we've reached the right depth then all you need to do is to grab your screw there you go and you finish up with the head of the screw just beneath the surface just how you want it beautiful Excellent. Now before we start putting on those slats for the screen, we want to get this framework nice and square. So get the frame, turn it upside down so the back is facing up. Then grab a tape measure and do a diagonal measurement from corner to corner. This reads two meters 165. That's from the outside edge to the outside edge. Do the other side. And the measurement is two meters 165. Both measurements are exactly the same. That's perfectly square. Now all you need to do is to attach a brace on either end. That's spot on. Now, these braces or blocks will stay in place until all the slats are on. Then we'll take those off and we're good to go. Too easy. With the frame now squared up and secure with those braces, it's time to start attaching those slats. But the slats need to be attached to something, which is where this treated pine comes in. And I'll just simply nail this to the inside edge of the frame and I've cut this bit of treated pine five millimeters shorter on either end that way water won't suck up through that end grain and rot the timber out and before I attach this I want to give it a couple of good coats with this exterior grade paint and this color is black because I have gaps between my slats and I wouldn't mind seeing some blackness between those gaps if you know what I mean. Alrighty, got my paintbrush, let's start painting. And like all good paint jobs, make sure you apply at least two coats, paying particular attention to the end grain because you don't want any water getting soaked up into the timber. I then just attach that frame to the exterior frame, first of all with my nail gun, and then finished off by driving in a few screws. Perfect. Now that's great, the frame's done, and now it's time to start installing the slats. And for the record, that drizzle we just had turned out being 250 millimeters or 10 inches worth of rain. It's a bit wet outside. Now before you start nailing your boards down in any which way you like, it's a great idea to map the whole thing out first. The reason being that you want the breech, which has the taps and the shower rows in a position where it's in the middle of a board. Not on a join like that, just looks a bit weird. And not on a smaller board like that, where drilling a hole will actually cut that board virtually in half. So you want it in the middle of a board, that way it looks good, and the cover plates also look nice and symmetrical. A bit of planning goes a long way. So what do you reckon? I think it's time to stop mucking around, cut these to size, and nail them on. Let's go. Okay, these two slats appear to be in the right spot. Now all we need to do is fill in the rest of the screen. Beautiful. And 
as per usual, I'm using my trusty old nail gun to nail down those slats. But if you don't have a nail gun, no dramas. Just pull out the trusty old hammer and nails and you're good to go. And remember when doing an outside project, make sure you use galvanized or stainless steel fixings. And what I'm up to here is that I'm putting in some extra framing to help stiffen up those slats. And just remember, when putting in the framing, not to get it in the way of where the plumbing pipe is going to go. And then just finish off by nailing those slats into the extra frame. With the screen now finished, it's time to position our taps and shower rows. Mark that on the screen and then grab our drill and drill out the holes. Mmm, I think it's time to take a quick break because I need to eat a big old piece of humble pie. I made a bit of a blue. This is what I did. But I also had a tap to go on. I totally forgot all about it. And unfortunately the tap doesn't finish up in the center of that board. It finishes up about an inch away from the top. Disappointing. And I thought I was being such a legend. And by the way, that humble pie could do with a dollop of ice cream. It was a bit tart. To attach the screen to the house, I need to screw through 16 millimeters of fiberboard and into the stud behind. Now these boards are secret nailed, so I can't locate any nails on the surface to find out where the studs are. So luckily, on hand, I have my trusty old magnetic stud finders. Now very quickly, just before I show you how these things work, these are the two types that I have. This first one here, is called a stud pop and it's commercially available. This thingamajiggy here is a homemade job that I made out of a rare earth magnet, a washer and a length of string. The stud pop, S-T-U-D-P-A-P, -P, is a very easy tool to use. All it is is a loose red section there and a magnet underneath. And all you need to do is to drag the stud pop, you notice that's loose, along the board until, bang. The red part straightens, you've found the nail, therefore you've found a stud. Take it off that nail, red part becomes loose. Back on the nail, straightens out again, and that's where that stud is. Very simple, but also very effective. And my homemade model works on the same principle. Drag the magnet along the wall until, bang. There you go, it's found the nail, therefore it's found the stud. This magnet is a lot stronger than the stud pop, but they both work very, very well. Love it. Okay, let's stop mucking around and get this slab set up. First of all, get it nice and level, square it up off the house, just like that. Level it up, nail it, peg it, do some more leveling, do some more nailing, bit more pegging, and you're done. That wasn't that hard, was it? Too easy. I got my mate Kurt from Sawtell Plumbing to give me a hand to connect the outdoor shower up to the sewer system. Kurt's good on a shovel too. I'm absolutely useless. Connect the pipes, attach the gully trap, backfill the hole, and we're good to go. Magic. Oh yeah, and by the way, if you've got a spurt, call Kurt. <laughs> good one, mate. Oh, I hope that breach is straight. Hmm, good stuff. Looking good, Curdy boy, looking good. Alright, let's give these taps a whirl. We have water. Well done, Kurt. No worries, mate. Good boy, mate. Oh, yay! Centre of drain. Look at that. Magic. Beautiful. 
Okay, let's find a wall stud to screw our frame to. Watch the red bit. Bang, there it is. We found a stud. Spot on. We can now screw the frame to the wall to make it nice and secure. And once that's done, then we can remove the support that was holding it up. Now that's fantastic. The frame's up, it looks great, the taps are on, and the plumbing's installed. Now all we need to do is to lay that slab. Ah, happy days. If you ever find yourself in a situation down the track where you're butting two slabs up against one another, it's always a good idea to place some expanding foam between the two to cater for any movement down the track. And all I'm doing here is putting down some crusher dust, about 30 millimeters worth, which will give a nice firm surface to lay a slab on. And check out my Wacker Packer. What a beauty. Now that's great. The crusher dust is down, it's packed, and now it's time to lay some plastic over the top of that crusher dust. And what the plastic does is that it prevents the moisture from coming up through your slab, which is really important inside your house because you have things like floorboards, etc. and you don't want moisture getting into them. But outside, with an outdoor shower or a pathway, it's either here nor there. But I have some, so I may as well use it. Lay the plastic, start pouring the slab, drop in your mesh, then finish the slab off and you're done. Too easy. Okay, let's lay that plastic. First of all, cut it in around the drain and then to the shape of the shower base. And then make sure you tape up any tears in the plastic to prevent any moisture coming up through it. Then remove the grate and cover the hole up with some timber to prevent any concrete going into that hole, clogging up the gully trap. And then it's on to making the concrete mix for the shower base. Seriously, it's just like, I don't know, making a cake, just not as tasty. And for this job, I used a total of 10 bags of pre-mixed concrete mix. Ooh, look at that. Beautiful, what a brew. Not too wet and not too dry. Just perfect for putting in your steel mesh, which I found underneath the house, which was handy. Just tap that down with your foot or with the shovel and away you go. Next thing you want to do is get your hammer and tap the boxing. And what that does is that it vibrates the side of the box and just ensures that the side of the slab is going to be nice and smooth. And then grab your level, it doesn't matter what it is, level a stick, anything straight and then just start leveling out that slab. And because we have a drain in the middle, it's actually 20 millimeters lower than the outside edges of the slab, which enables drainage to occur. Now just grab your edging tool and run it around the edge of the slab, and that gives a nice rounded finish. And then we'll just finish it off with a nice light broom finish, run our edger around the side one more time, and we're done. Okay, it's just over 24 hours down the track. The slab's gone off and it looks absolutely fantastic. I am wrapped, especially for somebody who doesn't do any concreting. See, anybody can do this stuff. And the last thing we need to do to finish the whole job off is just to remove that boxing. And hopefully, once that comes off, we'll finish up with a nice, smooth edge. Fingers crossed. Okay, let's cut those nails, pull out the pegs, and remove that board. All right, moment of truth. Just gently tap it off. And there you have it. That looks beautiful. Love it. Mission accomplished. So that's it folks, the outdoor shower is done. Complete with screen, 
tap wear, a concrete slab that includes drainage. I also put down some paving so your feet don't get dirty after having a shower. And I also added an old recycled wooden ladder to hang your towel off. Great tip, knackers! So that's it folks, I hope you enjoyed and found useful my how to build an outdoor shower video. And as per usual, a big thumbs up is always greatly appreciated. And if this is your first time to my channel, please hit that subscribe button for more handy tips. And if you'd like to see more detailed photos of the finished product and the build process, head on over to my Facebook page, which I'll leave a link to in the description box down below. So make sure you check that one out. Alrighty. I think I need a cup of tea and maybe even a shower. So till next time, I'm out of here. Cheers.